2016 marks the 80th anniversary of Placer County Sierra College. It's the only community college in Placer County and the largest college in the county, serving over 18,000 students annually. President Willie Duncan joins us to reflect on this important milestone and the role that Sierra College plays in our regional economy, next on Studio Sacramento. At Five Star Bank, community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. Thank you for joining us. President Duncan, what is the importance of this milestone to Sierra College? You know, I, I think it represents um, what Sierra College has meant to the community uh, for the length of time that we've been there, to have been uh, operating and educating um, the community members for 80 years producing a trained workforce, transferring students to four-year colleges. I think it just represents um, uh, our role in the community and how excited we are to have lasted 80 years and hopefully be around for another 100. I, I brought something, if I can give it to you, Scott. I know you're a, a uh, graduate of Consumnes River College yes, yourself. Yes, I am, proudly so. That's absolutely, but I know you're also a big supporter of all community colleges. Yes, I am. So we had 80-year celebration pins made for Sierra College, and I'd like you to have one. Why, thank you very much. I, w I will wear it proudly right next to my CRC pin. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. I appreciate that. So tell us how Sierra has changed over its history. You know, I think uh, probably the biggest change has been, um, you know, Placer County began as a fairly rural county. Uh, and uh, Sierra College was fairly small for a great number of years. And I think as um, the county has grown um, and has really become more of a suburban area, uh, Sierra College has grown, um, you know, to the tune of 18,000 students a year now. Um, and we've got three centers um, also uh, in Placer and in Nevada County. And uh, so we're a really large and diverse uh, district, 3,200 square miles. Uh, we go up to the lake and, and meet the Nevada border. And, um, and so it, it's, it's, I think, when you look at our geographic footprint plus our importance in the region and the connection to the Sacramento region, um, I, I think we've really grown into a big part of what happens here. Now, Sierra is part of this regional economy, um, but it also has, and, and playing a role in, in that, it still has a, a rural facing side of it. And so you, you have this duality that is both an opportunity and a challenge. How, how do you serve both your urban population as well as your rural population? Sure, that's actually something we spend a lot of time thinking about um, because it is a little tougher to serve a rural population. Uh, access to higher education is extremely important. In fact, there are some statistics um, that show that the closer in proximity somebody is to a source of higher education, the more likely they are to actually get a college degree. So that is one of the reasons why in the last decade we've built a center in Nevada County in Grass Valley and we've also built a center in Truckee uh, to try to serve those populations. Um, however, the majority of the population in our district does live in South Placer County uh, in the communities of Roseville, Rockland, Lincoln, Auburn. And so the Rockland campus of Sierra College is our largest and our flagship campus. And so uh, we do have to make sure that we're always serving that population, uh, but not forgetting our rural populations. And um, many times the larger campus carries the other centers so that we can, so that we can offer things out in across the district, um, knowing that at the, at the larger campus, we're gonna have maybe more enrollment. Are, because of that huge geographic footprint you have? Yes. Are you all doing anything with technology in terms of doing classes via the web or anything like that so that that way you can get much of what happens at the Rockland campus out to the other parts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, online education is probably one of our fastest growing components of delivery for us. And it's been a concerted effort to do that. 
Um, over the last few years, um, we have uh, more than doubled the number of online classes that we've offered, which does allow somebody out in a remote um, area to access those classes. We're also talking right now about doing some more um, work with um, direct access so that a student can log in from their home computer or a computer at a, at a computer lab and, um, and connect directly with a class that might be in progress at the Rockland campus. What is it that you all are working on that you're most excited about in meeting the needs of this the, the, the changing Placer County that you serve? Yeah, I think uh, for me, there's there's quite a few things I could talk about, but I think what I want to hit on the most right now is um, really our connection to the business community. I'm really proud of what we've done to really open up Sierra College to the local uh, business community and try to support it. Um, we have more, uh, very recently developed a partnership with Hacker Lab, um, who operated in downtown Sacramento, um, and they are very well known across the nation yes. as a maker space. Uh, we are the first community college in the country to have developed a public-private partnership with an entity like Hacker Lab, and we've opened up a maker space in Rockland. Um, sometimes you don't think of maker spaces in a community. Actually, actually, share with us again what exactly is Hacker Lab. Sure. Uh, well, Hacker Lab is a private company, but they um, they operate a maker space uh, and a co-working and space. What's a, and what's a maker space? Yeah. Um, so the the concept of a maker space is to um, have people come together in one space. Uh, they, we put equipment in that location so that if you want to design um, a product, maybe you're a small business person, you've got an idea. Um, you can go and get CAD software without having to buy it yourself. You can use a CNC router. You can use a 3D printer. Um, those kinds of things are made available to you, which would take you, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of investment to get those on your own. Instead, you can come into this location and for a very um, small membership fee, you can use all of that equipment. And really, it helps a, a maker or a manufacturer take a product from their brain right out to the street. We hold meetups and um, startups uh, uh, contests on that location. Students can participate, but so can community members. And they all come together, bring their ideas together, and through really a, a a germination of thoughts and ideas. We're hoping that it spurs entrepreneurial activity in the area. And in, aren't those spaces also important just because of what, there's a, a term that's used, collisions, where people randomly run into each other and they kind of bounce things off of each other? Absolutely. Um, there's another term called third space. And um, it's, it's really this idea that you've got this other space that you can go and congregate bounce ideas off of people. Um, if you've got a thought and you just talk to people who know the same things you do, maybe you don't go off on a particular angle. But if you talk to somebody else in another sector of the economy, you might begin to see other applications for your idea. And it really expands that. One of the other things we did along this idea of makerspace was um, Sierra College hosted the first maker fair um, in the region. And we had over 8,000 people come to the campus uh, on a Saturday for this maker fair. That kind of shows how vibrant that community is and how interested people are in this in this. You, you're very involved in, uh, you know, sort of public and civic affairs within the region not just in Placer, but, but across the region, uh, organizations like Valley Vision and others like that. What, is, what are you experiencing right now that's going on that, that makes these events, like this, this maker event and this new joint partnership, it seems like that there's just this burst of energy. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, there is something going on here uh, in this area. And uh, we've got um, such a wealth, I think, of people that are willing to collaborate, that are willing to talk about how do we lift up our region um, economically, but in many other ways too. And um, so we've had some great conversations and I've really enjoyed being a part of that and trying to, trying to elevate that as we've um, tried to build the economy and really support business in the area. Um, and I think you know, education obviously plays a huge role in that and what we can try to do, especially at the community college level. So the entrepreneurship is, is obviously something that's important to, to Sierra. Mm -hmm. What other 
uh, major initiatives is Sierra working on these days to try and, and, and meet the needs of the community? Sure, we've got a number of them. Um, you know, we've got a really large uh, veterans population on our campus, almost a thousand veterans on our campus, and we've, uh, for a number of years, had a veterans resource center there. We've just recently uh, joined the Sacramento Metro Chamber um, and their SBDC effort, a Small Business Development Center, and so we are now the veterans hub for the Small Business Development Center for the entire region. Really? And so that's another way to try to support business in the area. If a veteran wants to start a business, they can come to us and access those services. So that's one area. We also have, um, we've created a Guardian Scholar Program, and that Guardian Scholar Program serves former foster youth that have timed out of the foster youth system, and they now need a place to go. Um, and they've come to Sierra College. We've got the largest former foster youth population um, in the region, and we're one of only two Guardian Scholar programs at a community college in California. And when you talk about populations mm -hmm. like foster youth, mm -hmm. there there is a great underserved population where it is that um, there are kids and adults who are unprepared for the college experience. And community college becomes that one portal where it is that they can get back engaged. How do you, how do you wrestle with that challenge? Yeah, that's um, a huge part of what we do. 70% of the students that come to Sierra College come because they want to transfer to get a four-year degree. But we also have 28 um, career and technical education programs to train students and get them right out into the workforce. Um, one of the things that we've done recently, here's an example of a program. Um, the uh, CSU gives a test, it's called an early assessment test. It tries to gauge whether or not a high school student is ready for college level math and English. Um, we implemented a program in partnership with Sacramento State and with all of our feeder high schools in which we put a senior level math class into place. The curriculum was developed jointly by the faculty of all three entities, breaking down those silos in education and trying to get us all working together. And we've now implemented that, that class across um, all of our uh, feeder schools. A number of other colleges are now adopting that class and working with their feeder high schools. And that class really takes a high school student from where they are and find, tries to identify that gap to get them college ready and then fills that gap in the senior year. We've heard a lot about the lost senior year. Um, you know, students don't have a full schedule many times in their senior year. So we're adding a piece of curriculum in, in partnership, to try to help bridge that gap and get them ready uh, for a college education. And also gets them uh, through uh, Sierra faster and hopefully on to a four-year, right? Absolutely. So along those lines, we're also working on a, um, a program in which students can get dual enrollment. So we're working with all of our feeder high schools to put college classes on the high school campuses. Um, so that, that you'd actually get college credit for? Correct, yes, you would get college credit for and begin to, to cut down that time to degree. So if I'm a high school junior or senior and I want to take uh, my math and my English or, or a history class, I can do that while I'm a high school student and um, I can get college credit. And then that will meet also, it'll meet both my high school requirements and my college requirements and get me to that degree faster and get me moving on, on my education quicker. That's great. What do you think, you know, in your travels talking with people, what do you think is the biggest misconception that most people have about community college? Um, you know, I think people see community colleges and almost take them for granted just a little bit um, because they kind of see them as that place you go if you don't know what you want to do or where or where you want to go and I really think we are so much more than that um, you know community college serves the entire population we serve 100 percent of the population and we have programs for everybody and um, no matter where you are in your educational path if you want to get on track towards a, a degree or towards a career um, or just build some skills if you just want to come back to school and and, and maybe you need to beef up your computer skills. You can do that at your local community college. And I think that's just the amazing thing that we've got here um, that we offer. And I think it gets overlooked sometimes. Um, well, on the national level, there's a big conversation going on about the role of community colleges and workforce preparation and actually getting people who need to be retrained back into the workforce. One of the biggest barriers that's talked about is cost. Yeah. How, where are, is Sierra at in that conversation? 
So um, we are, California community colleges in general, are the least expensive community colleges in the country. Um, Wait a minute. <laughs> There's actually something where California is less expensive? <laughs> it's absolutely true. Um, that's, that's a startling <laughs> fact all in itself. It is. You're right. Um, it's $46 a unit to take a class. It used to be zero. It used to be free. I wish it still was free. I'm old enough to remember those. Okay. <laughs> but, um, uh, but there is a movement across the country to make community colleges free, to recognize the role that a community college could play. Um, there are some examples in California. The Long Beach Beach Promise is a partnership between Long Beach State University, Long Beach Community College, and the Long Beach High Schools to try to get a student through that whole process. I think maybe we're ready for the Capital Promise. Uh, you know, I'd love to see Sierra College, Sac State, the Los Rios Colleges, all of our feeder schools working together to try to provide a program so that students can move through as inexpensively as possible and get that degree. I don't want to count out our, our private partners and, and the UC also. We've got a wealth of higher ed in this area and of education. It's one of our strengths. And I think we ought to be leveraging that and working together so that we can help cut the cost for, for everybody as they get that degree. When, when you think about, when you walk around your campus and you're watching the students all from these, they come from various places, different backgrounds like the veterans you talk mm -hmm. about, what strikes you about the experience that people have at Sierra? What makes it special? Sure. You know, I really think Sierra is a special place, and I came to Sierra College about four, a little over four years ago, um, not having ever stepped foot on the campus before, uh, except to interview for the job as the president of Sierra College. And I was immediately struck by the, um, first it's a beautiful campus, you see it when you walk up to the campus, but I was immediately struck by the passion of the people that work there. The faculty that work for Sierra College um, have built incredible programs that they have put their life's work into, their blood, sweat, and tears. Um, we have a natural history museum on our campus, which is a bit unique. Really? Na yep. And it actually was voted, uh, just ranked one of the top 30 in the nation of natural history museums. And it wow. has literally been built by the hands of our faculty mm -hmm. and our staff that have worked on it over the years. So when you have that kind of passion um, for what you do, you can't help but feel it. Our students feel it. They get a connection with, um, with their, with, directly with their faculty. I think that's one of the great things about a community college that sometimes gets lost. It is because it is one of the few places where it is that you can really connect with your instructors and you'll see them in the hallway you can sit down it's a much more intimate setting it, it really is you get when a community college faculty member works for us they um, you know at, at the university um, you know they're expected to publish they're expected to do research and those are fantastic things and we need those but when you teach at a community college you're there to teach and um, they have we have smaller classes you know 30 to 35 is our average size class and you get a lot of direct access with your faculty member um, you know we don't have very many TAs uh, in the classes and so when you're going um, in the class you're talking with your faculty member you're interacting with them you're getting their knowledge and, and um, you know you know they care you, you can hear it from them. It's obvious you're very passionate about about what you do. How did you come to choose this particular field to go into? You know, it's it's really interesting. My background is actually as on the business side of, of a college. I started in the CSU, working for a CSU campus, building budgets. That, that's what I was a technician, building budgets. Not in the instructional side is how most community college presidents come, come to be. But um, when I was uh, uh, working at a CSU campus, one of my mentors, who was a, a vice president at that campus, came to me and he said, there's a job at a community college outside of Bakersfield, where I'm born and raised, that, um, that is hiring a dean. You should go apply for that job. And I said, you know, I'm, what, do, what do I know about being a dean of a college? I don't, and he said, no, you're qualified. So I applied for the job and I immediately fell in love with the mission of community colleges. You can see the work that's happening on a day-to-day -day basis and I was just energized by it. it. It really, quite frankly, lit a fire under me um, to say that, you know, I, this needs to happen on a grander scale every day. More people need to have access to what's happening here on this college campus. And if you could take, you know, from all the things that you're doing, if you could do the one moonshot project <laughs> that you haven't been able to quite put your hands on yet, what would it be? You know, um, I think the competitiveness of a region 
is um, one of the key things is the level of education in that area. And, and I'll step back just a little bit. I, I really do believe regions are kind of the economic uh, competitive entities now, not so much cities competing against each other, but it's really regions. And when you look at the Sacramento region, which we are a big part of, um, and the way we compete against other regions to try to lift ourselves economically, education is right at the center of that. I wanna make it so that every single person in this region has access to higher education. And that's gonna take all of us working together. That's gonna take our, our elementary schools, our high schools, community colleges, universities, the business sector, our cities, all of us aligned on that thought. And if we could do that, I, I think this guy's well, the Well, let's talk about that for a second because one of the things that is often uh, talked about is that there's not as much alignment between particularly the K through 12 system and higher education. Yeah. Uh, and that we would do much better by our kids by creating a, a tighter integration between them so that that way there was more of a seamless transition. And if you're going to go into a place where, or into a field where it's a certificate, we start preparing you in 10th grade or so. If you're going to go for something that requires a two-year degree, we do that as well, or a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. How can we do better, Willie? Yeah, you, you stated it perfectly. I mean, you really have. Um, that's the genesis of the programs I mentioned earlier, which um, you know reached out to the high schools and trying to put college classes in the high schools. It maybe even needs to happen earlier than that. Maybe by ninth grade, you're, you're meeting with um, colleges to try to see what is it that I wanna do so we can get you on that pathway quicker. Um, we've also been in one of the areas I've tried to really work is to reach out to universities. We've developed partnerships um, with this thought in mind of how do we break down these silos. So for example, one partnership um, that we created with Sac State was to create a, an associate's degree in nursing to a bachelor's in science in nursing uh, program. So normally you would come to Sierra and you would do two years at Sierra, get your nursing degree. Then you would go to Sac State if you wanted to get your bachelor's in nursing, do two years there. We've Combine the programs, we've cut a year off of it, you can do it in three now, you go year round, you're co-enrolled at times, um, we're bringing financial aid in, we've gotten some large donors to put money in so that we can help cut the cost for students. That's one small example, we need to scale that up. We need that kind of cooperation and that kind of thought process on all of our programs so that students can move seamlessly, we're getting them through in time, and we're providing the economic benefit for them so that it doesn't take them five to six to seven Are years there particular sectors of the economy where we're screaming for that type of partnership that you're doing in nursing? You know, are, where are the employer's interests at? Yeah, that's a great question, and we're, we probably have a lot of different sectors within our economy that we're, that we're looking at that. Healthcare is one really large sector in our area, um, and we probably um, don't even have enough programs to support that sector right now. Um, we have a growing technology um, sector within this region. Um, we actually, in the outer areas, we have growing farming, um, you know, in ag. I mean, UC Davis is the world leader in, in, with their new ag center. Um, those are areas that we could grow. Construction, as, as the region grows, construction is a big area where we can train um, career and tech ed program to get people certificates or two-year programs to get them right out into the workforce. Um, there's, we, we need to probably do a better job of aligning all of those educational assets with those business needs so that we can retool ourselves and produce exactly yeah, what they need. It's interesting because you, meant, you led with technology mm -hmm. and we are compared to other regions of our size we have a, a deficit in terms of our penetration in, in the technology yeah. sector. And there's a kind of a chicken and egg problem. Is it that we don't have enough students? Do we, have, we don't have enough companies? What's the relationship between the two? you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's probably both. Um, you know, we, we probably don't have the programs because we haven't had the business, and then business doesn't come because we don't have the programs, right? So it's the chicken or the egg. Part of it, I think, is our closeness to um, the Bay Area, and obviously that, he, that being a huge tech center, that it does kind of suck the, the trained folks that we have that come out of our programs get pulled to the Bay Area. We've got to find a way to pull them back. We've got to find a way to get them to, to see, hey, there's opportunities 
opportunity in this area. And I think maybe um, some of our efforts that we're working on right now, the Greater Sacramento Area Economic Council and some of the work that they're doing, I think we're starting to gain some traction on trying to show some of those businesses that would locate in the Bay Area, hey, there's, there's something happening right here. Placer County is a great place to locate your, your tech sector business or, or anywhere in the Sacramento region, really. And there are trained people here that are coming out of our universities and out of our community colleges right now that can stay here if we, if we can get the companies. And, that, and that's the final piece is that you, you turn out these people. It's about keeping them here after you, you've given them this marvelous experience. Any advice on what we might do in order to make sure that we're more sticky as sure, a region? Sure. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of regional efforts that are going forth right now. I mentioned Greater Sacramento and, and those efforts, and um, I think making ourselves more competitive in that respect is important. I think the work that um, that is happening with, um, you know, that Valley Vision is doing um, and um, some of the other large organizations within the region, I think can help with that. We've got to provide opportunity for our young people as they come out of their education to stay here and be productive. And we're going to leave it there. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. And that's our show. Thanks to our guests and thanks to you for watching Studio Sacramento. I'm Scott Syfax. See you next time right here on KVIE. At Five Star Bank, community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. All episodes of Studio Sacramento, along with other KVIE programs, are available to watch online at kvie.org video.